Hello, welcome to Daryl's Beekeeping Videos. I'm Daryl, I'm a master beekeeper, and tonight's lesson is about how to assemble a frame, and also I'm going to briefly talk about my nail kit, which I frequently get asked about, so I'll discuss briefly discuss it. So what I typically have uh, in my uh, shop whenever I'm building frames, building high bodies, is I have this little plastic parts uh, container you can get from Walmart or any hardware store. Just And I like the ones that have the removable divider simply because I can uh, configure things a little bit better. Uh, I also have one and a quarter inch uh, nails for assembling frames. I have three quarter inch uh, nails. Again, I know you probably can't see it from that far away, um, but again, I use three quarter inch nails and I use five eighths inch nails or tacks, however you want to call them, uh, when I assemble my frames. All three of those will get used this evening in this lesson. Uh, I also have um, these little grommets. You can't see it very well. They're little brass or silver uh, grommets uh, that are used to be placed inside the end of an end bar frame. In a later video, I'll actually show you how to do that whenever I get ready to uh, wire a frame for you. Um, but again, that'll be in a separate video. I also keep inside my box, I carry a um, wire set. Basically, it's a, a spur that allows me to, to embed the wire. I also carry hive staples, little U-shaped staples, uh, in case I need to quickly attach two hives. Usually, it's used whenever I uh, transport hives. Again, it's just handy to have about a dozen of those inside my box. I have a small pair of foldable pliers in case I ever need to use them. Um, they're kind of handy for pulling out nails if you don't have anything else. I also have a black permanent marker. In this case, it's a Sharpie pen. Um, I have an ink pen in case I need to write with that. Then I have my grommet set tools. When you get them, you're going to notice that they are just raw metal. And I know you can't, again, I know you can't see it on the camera that far away, but this is actually starting to rust. And I keep it like this so that, to show you what it likes, looks like after a while when you get it directly from the store. And the way you're going to use it, again, whenever I get ready to show you how to uh, wire a frame, is you simply put a grommet in there and then you insert that into the end bars. Um, but again, I'm not going to show you it tonight. That'll be a later video. But again, I'm just showing you what's in my toolkit. But what I am mentioning is, again, you see it, it's rusted. So what I usually do is I quickly uh, shine this up with uh, some sandpaper. Then I get some of this Plasti Dip. And again, you can get this at any major hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, in your local hardware store. Um, you can also get it on Amazon. And then what I do is I take a pair of pliers and grab onto it and just dip it a couple times. And what this plastic dip does, it one, it gives you a better grip on it, and two, it keeps it from rusting. Um, so it's kind of handy to have. The other things I have inside of it, I have a couple different uh, X-Acto knives, little razor blades. Uh, you can use either this little 50 cent one or you can use the bigger box cutter version. And what you're going to use uh, that for is whenever you separate the wedge top from the uh, top bar on the uh, frame. And again, you'll see that here in a little bit. Uh, I also have a pair of diagonal wire cutters that is used to trim the wedge so it fits into the frame a little bit better. It's mostly what I use it for. And you can also use it for crimp, uh, cutting the wire whenever you uh, crimp the wire. Um, so I'll set that aside for now. And that's basically all I need from there. Again, all that fits into, inside my case. And then for tonight's lesson, um, you also need, if you're going to drill out the uh, end bars on your frames, um, then you need a drill of some sort, either cord or cordless. I find the cordless better. And a 1 8 inch drill bit. Again, I'll show you how to do it tonight, and I will also show it to you whenever I actually uh, wire a frame for you as well. Um, but again, I'll set that aside for now. And then you're going to need... A, either a claw hammer in case you need to uh, remove the nails or if you don't have a claw hammer if you happen to have a tack hammer um, some tack hammers don't have a nail puller on it so if you have a hive tool on the hive tool this little slot that most people don't know what it's for is actually a nail puller uh, so you can use that uh, on the 5 8 inch uh, nails it's not quite small enough holes but some uh, high tools, the, the slot is actually small enough to pull it up. Um, in this case, I have a, a 16 inch hammer, so I won't need this tonight, but I'll show you both uh, with the tack hammer. And I personally like this tack hammer that you get from uh, Harbor Freight. Simply, it's a seven, seven ounce Pittsburgh 
hammer. And the reason I like it is your traditional uh, tack hammers are about three quarters of the length of this. Uh, so this gives you a little bit longer head so that way when you're tacking the hammers in you can be a little bit more precise uh, when you're getting into the end bar. Again, I'll show you that here in a little bit. Uh, and it also comes in handy whenever you're um, placing in foundation and you're tacking in your uh, 5 8 inch tacks into the wedge. Uh, that will also allow you to get in closer and not hit the wax as easy. Um, and then for, for tonight's purpose, again, because I'm in a hotel, I'm on a business trip. Uh, I've got the, uh, just a towel on the uh, desk just to dampen the sound a little bit. And then I have a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood that will give me a better positioning and a more solid surface whenever I get ready to uh, assemble my equipment. So first thing I want to do for the assembly of the, of the um, wedge top uh, frame, and there are a lot of different types of frames. I'll discuss that in a later uh, video, but the most common is a wedge top. And as you'll see here in a minute, I know, again, I know you can't see it that far away, but this wedge will pop off uh, and I'm going to cut it off. And that's why it's called a wedge top. And it's typically the most common frame when used for with natural beeswax, especially beeswax that has wired supports on it. But you can also use it with unwired beeswax. Um, and again, in a later video, when I teach you how to do starter strips, I will show you how to do that as well and use this type frame as well. You will also need a full set of frames. So again, you're going to need a wedge top. And I like the groove bottom um, type of frames as well. And again, they have split bottoms and they also have uh, other different styles of frames. Again, I'll talk about it later, but my common frame is a wedge top and a groove bottom. It's just personal preference, what I like. Um, and if you want to save money, uh, when you buy frames, if you buy them individually, they're going to cost you anywhere between two and five dollars a piece. Um, but if you buy them in bulk, especially if you buy them from my favorite stores is Man Lake, other people like uh, they dance um, frames. But when you buy them in bulk of 100 or 500, you can save a lot of money. So, for example, when I first bought these, I probably bought uh, 500 at a time. Uh, but you, I was paying the 100 uh, pieces price. And I think I paid a dollar a piece back in the day. I just recently researched it and it's a dollar, they're about to a dollar 36 now, if I remember correctly, for the wedge top uh, for the deep frames. Um, so, again, you're going to need an end bar excuse me, a top bar, a bottom bar, and then you're going to need two end bars. I have a couple extra here just in case I need them um, for other demonstrations, but again, you're going to need two end bars, one top bar, and one bottom bar. Now, when you get ready to go assemble it, some beekeepers like to glue their parts together. I personally do not use any wood glue in any of my assembly process because some wood glues can contain formaldehyde, and I do not introduce any chemicals into my hives that I absolutely need, uh, need to. So for personal choices, I don't do it. But if you do, teach their own. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. If you do it, again, I, but because there's risk of some glues having formaldehyde, I personally will never do it. And in all the years I've been beekeeping, I've never had any problems with frames coming apart, uh, especially the way I do it with the uh, uh, three-quarter inch nail in the end of the end bar you're not going to pop that frame off. And if I, some my beekeepers will argue that if the bees propolize the frame down, that you could actually split the frame. But whenever I see a frame is heavily propolized in, I simply take my hive tool and go around it. And, and in between the two end bars that are together in two adjacent frames, I simply take my hive tool and I've got a, a hive inspection uh, tool uh, video and also a uh, video on how to use hive tools. And I could brief, briefly discuss in each one of those taking your hive tool and going down, down in between them and you won't split off these end tabs when you do that. All right, so now getting on with the assembly process itself. So I'm going to take my wedge top and I'm going to use either my box cutter or my small um, razor blade. And when you do that, You'll notice on this smaller one that it has a uh, beveled edge on either side of the blade. And what I like to do is I like to line this blade along that line of the, uh, the bevel. And then I extend the blade out far enough that it just barely extends into the groove. So that when I draw it, I got a nice shoulder on this razor blade to rest against as I pull it back. 
And when I do it, I've always got the frame firmly on a solid platform and I'm being very, very careful and slow and I'm watching, keeping my eye on the tip of this blade at all times so that I'm making sure that it's not slicing into my hand or in, into my body. Because if you're not careful, the body, and when I do it, you're going to see that I'm actually stepping off at an angle. So if this blade slips or gets caught on a piece of wood and jerks out, it's not coming straight into my body. It's going to fly past me. Uh, so again, I've already preset this to the proper depth. And now I'm just going to simply hold this down and I'm going to go in from the end. Right under the wedge, you can see that it's, that it's coming underneath. And I'm going to set it back down. And again, watch my finger placement. I'm holding it down with my fingers spread apart. So I'm maintaining maximum control of it. But I'm keeping my fingers back away from this blade. So again, now I'm off the edge. I'm giving just a slight tilt down with the front of the blade to kind of catch underneath that uh, wedge a little bit. There's just a very small strip toward the center of this wedge that's actually attached. So again, I'm just simply pulling it, pulling slowly. Now I'm feeling a little bit of resistance. There's probably a piece of solid wood in there, uh, one of the veins. Again, so I'm just, as it gets closer to me, I'm just simply pull it, stepping, make sure I'm stepping away, and it slips off just that easy. Now if you don't mind this little bit of a burr here, you could actually leave that. I'm a little OCD, so I'll generally take my one razor blade or the other, and I generally like to clean that up. And again, you want to have a sharp blade when you do. And if you get in there and the, and the wood grain is uh, going against you, you can simply scrape it against the other direction. Again, same thing with this. I use the color until I get this little bit. And I kind of tilt it in a little bit uh, to the tip down until I get that little bit of strip off. And you can see it's formed a little shoelace looking piece, a little string of wood. All right. And then you've got this little strip on the back of the wedge that you just peeled off. If you want, you can simply scrape that off too, or you can simply turn it upside down so that that little piece of strip wood is facing up, which would be toward the inside of the frame, just like this. And that works just fine. And then you've got a nice, tight uh, connection between the, the wedge, the, the frame top and this little wedge. All right, so you saw how easily that comes off. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab two end bars and if you notice on the top it's got these two little grooves and those fit perfectly around this end bar and I personally like the end bars that have holes so that way it allows me to wire the frame should I choose to uh, and I generally only wire a frame if it's for honey supers I definitely do that and occasionally I'll use a uh, fishing line for um, a brood frame as well uh, and the reason I like wire for honey supers because I know I'm not going to catch a queen cell up there and the reason I like fishing line for the brood chambers is because if I make it if I have a queen cell and I want to cut out the queen cell for a queen cell split um, then I can simply do that and have to only cut through fishing line vice cutting through metal but again today's only a symbol of the frame I'll have a separate video on that process as well so again I'm just simply inserting this top bar again it only goes on one way and which side on it, it really doesn't matter because that's what I'm going to use the drill for. And then I'm going to take my bottom bar and I'm going to make sure that the groove faces toward the top of the frame. And then if you wanted to, when you're done, you could actually square this up. They actually make jigs, uh, framing jigs, where you can put 10 of these frames in it and then have them perfectly uh, perpendicular or square. I'm not worried about it. The bees don't, certainly don't care about it. And there's enough space when you do the uh, assembly frame. You see that there's a good uh, half inch or so between the end bar and the frame. So there's plenty of space for the bees to move around. So if it's not perfectly square, I'm not worried about it. Again, in all the years that I've been uh, beekeeping, I've never had a problem. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a bunch of one and a quarter inch nails. I'm going to close up my razor blade because I'm finished with it now. I'm going to set it aside. Same thing, I'm going to close this one up so it doesn't accidentally get me. And now if this is nice and dry fit, you notice I've not used any glue at all. I'm going to take two one and a quarter inch nails and I'm going to put them down through this end bar so that it goes straight up and down or at a slight angle uh, toward where it's staying inside the wood. It's very small. It's only about a quarter inch wide end bar. 
And again, this is where I like this little hammer because it has a little bit more control. So excuse the noise for a second. Again, I'm just kind of holding the nail with my thumb and I'm holding the frame. I'm pulling the frame in horizontally and I'm put with my two fingers, my thumb and my um, index finger and I'm pressing down with my hand, just kind of pull everything tight. Again, and I'm just kind of leaning in. So I've got pressure against the frame, the end bar, and I'm putting pressure with against the nail with just barely with my index finger and getting a few light taps until it starts. Once I see it start, then I simply tap it in. Again, once you get into a rhythm, you can put these things in, uh, build these things really quickly. I built a hundred in one night, one night. All right, so again, just lightly tapping it in. And then I flip it around. Again, once you get into a rhythm, you notice I just flip it around. That's my technique. And once you get into a rhythm, it really goes quick. All right, so again, I'm going in, lightly hold it in. And if it goes through the frame, you can just knock it back out a little bit. And that's where you can use your pliers to help pull them out. Again, because these are so small, uh, they come out really easily. All right, so I've got two in each side. I'm going to flip it upside down. And I've nailed it. And I bent it. So if that happens, it happens to all of us all the time. You just bit, lightly bend it back up. And if you're afraid of hitting your uh, hand with nails, you can simply hold it with a pair of pliers. Until it goes in. Just like that. Flip it around. When I flip it, I'm holding it with the index, fan, uh, index finger just to keep everything from falling apart. In this case, I got pressure pulling inward with my thumb. Again, however you hold it, it really doesn't matter a whole lot because it's going to tighten up anyway. In this case, the nail's trying to come back on me a little bit, so I'm just putting a little pressure so it goes, ver goes back vertical more. And now I'll straighten back up. All right, so from there, I've got it pretty solid this way. The beads aren't going to be strong enough to separate this. What you're trying to defeat is when the, you pry the uh, frame out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a three-quarter inch nail for either end. So if when you pull the uh, wedge off, you'll see that there's this little step up, a little rabbit. So whenever I put this three-quarter inch nail, I want to put it into the solid piece that has more solidness. So again, you can see it kind of steps down. So in this case, it's on the back side. So I'm going to pay attention to it. And the reason I have this three-quarter inch piece of plywood here is it allows the frame to rest more solidly. So if it's if I didn't have this um, to where it holds over flat, this where this end bar is laying flat, it's just a little bit more uncomfortable of an angle. So by having it um, this three-quarter inch plywood, I can simply lay this flat and I have a little bit more control. So again, now that I see that this solid piece is on the front side of the frame as you're uh, toward you in the camera, I'm just going to simply take this nail and put it at an angle to start it off with, making sure that I hit. And if you if you're paying attention, you see this little groove that's here. Um, so basically, you're solid. What you're doing is you're aiming for the center of that mass of that solid wood um, and not getting into the groove. Again, it'll be pretty obvious. I'm putting it about an eighth of an inch back or so uh, from the top of the bar. Again, just holding it, pinching it between two fingers, just giving it a few taps until it starts to go in. Once I see that the, the nail has got a pretty good hold, then I simply tug it in. And, this, and that's why I like this Pittsburgh uh, hammer, 7 ounce hammer from Harbor Freight, because it gets into the corner a lot easier. All right, so now that one's in. I just simply rotate it up again. Now this solid portion of the wood is toward me, so I just got to remember that. Again, I grab another 3 quarter inch nail. And then I just take it down about an eighth of an inch or so uh, onto the um, end bar. Again, it's at an angle. And it's just like 
easily just like that. And the purpose of that going into that end bar, whenever I use my hive tool to pry it out, or if you have my favorite hive tool, if you watch my hive tool video, my favorite tool is a J hook. But whenever I get ready to pry it out, I've got this three quarter inch nail in the end that helps keep me from prying off the top bar from the end bar and it makes my life much easier. Now the next thing you need to do is at some point uh, when you, before you put your foundation in, you're gonna need to put this wedge in and when you do it, you'll see that most of the time, although this one's actually working out pretty good, but for whatever reason, most of the time whenever I do this, this little wedge is too tight and it tends to bow up like this as I'm trying to put it in. So the purpose of having the diagonal pliers is I can simply go in this about a sixteenth of an inch and this is the quickest way to cut this off is just simply go in about a sixteenth of an inch on this wedge and then clip it off. You can see that I've got a small piece of wood and if it had this been tight to begin with it would then fit in there nice and smoothly. Next thing I want to do I'm going to set the frame aside for now is I want to grab three of my five eighths inch nails three and then I'm going to start them remember I was telling you about before when I cut this wedge off I've got this small strip of wood in the back that was holding this wedge on I'm going to simply leave that facing up because I want that face toward the bottom of the frame so I don't have to trim it off so I just go back from the edge of the frame uh, from the wedge about an inch or two so that I don't have to hit my end bar as I'm tacking this in and then because I'm going to put this little strip of wood toward the center of the frame I'm just going to place it like over to my left and then I'm going to angle in at this angle so that my nail is pushing in toward the center. So I'm going to come back about an inch or two. It's not an exact science. It doesn't really matter. About an inch or inch, anywhere between an inch and two to two inches. I'm going to come in at a light angle until I feel this nail, this 5 8 inch nail, starting to come through the wedge. And if it comes out too far, I can just use this 3 quarter inch plywood Again, just tap it back out ever so slightly. And again, I'll put three nails in of the 5 8 inch nails all facing out. And the reason you want to face them out, I put the nail in about the center of the wedge, um, horizontally on the wedge, and then I tap it in. Uh, again, at an angle. And again, if it doesn't want to cooperate, you just kind of lean it over a little bit with your finger until it goes through. And the reason I'm doing this is whenever I get ready to put my foundation in, is it by having it angled out, that nail angled out, it does two purposes. One, it drives the wedge in a little tighter into the foundation, and it helps keep me from hitting the, the hammer from hitting the, the foundation. And again, it's no big deal. The bees will fix it. It's not a big deal. And it's just that quick. And to save time, um, what I do is I actually do a bunch of these during the wintertime. Uh, that's a good wintertime project to build frames. So that way, when I need them in the spring or summer, I've already got them done. And I just have these stacked in a little box somewhere so that if I need to, I can quickly grab it. Again, uh, I won't need it for tonight's thing because I'm not putting uh, foundation in for you tonight, but that is how to assemble a frame. It is literally that simple and it is without glue. And you can see I'm pulling on it pretty tight and it doesn't pull apart. If I wanted to, I could take any kind of uh, small framing square and put it in here to see if it is perfectly square or not. But again, you can see just because the way it fits in here uh, naturally, it's pretty straight as is. So. That's how you assemble a frame. Um, I was telling you about uh, if you want to uh, do it now or if you want to do it uh, prior to wiring a frame, um, you'll see that these little end bars, a lot of times there's bits of wood when they manufacture it. It's not a clean hole. So what I do is I like to use a drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit and I clean out these holes and give it a clean hole so that way whenever I can run my wire or especially my fishing line, I've got a nice clean hole to go through. So I'm just going to do that for you now and it goes really quick. Just in and out a couple times. Just clean that hole out. Again, just flip it around. Yeah, and there's one that's not cleaned out really well. That hole was barely visible. And it's just that simple. And what I was telling you about before with the uh, just a little bonus footage, little bonus footage. If you take your um, grommet tool and your little grommet, you can simply put the grommet on your tool, and then from there, you simply give it a little twist in there, and then you've got a nice piece of wire grommet in there to help keep any wire 
cross wires from digging into the wood. I don't put them in whenever I do fishing line because there's no need, the fishing line is not going to cut the um, wood, but the metal wire will dig into the wood a little bit more, so that's why I put a grommet in it. Um, so that's my video. Thanks for watching.